Hello everyone, and welcome back to TSW, uh, not TSW, uh, Train Simulator, where I initially got the horn keys wrong and accidentally opened the front coupler, thus. Alright, well anyway, this is the, obviously you can see that this is the SNCF TGV, I think it's the Euro Duplex. So it looks very much like what came with Marseille to Avignon, but I'm pretty sure this is meant to be the Euro Duplex version. Anyway, today we're on the uh, the Bahnstrecke Strasbourg to Karlsruhe route, which Dovetail brought out in October last year, and it is, I think it might well be the only international route I've got in my collection, because obviously Strasbourg is in France, and then Karlsruhe is in Germany. And today we're going all the way to Karlsruhe with a pair of the, a pair of these TGV duplex units coupled together, which is actually quite insane by my standards because if you look there on the bottom of the HUD, you'll see that it's a 20 car train. So that means we've got two units coupled together. And as and I do apologise for the poor frame rates, but uh, there's not really a lot that I can do about that. Well. Without getting a new, without getting a good powerful computer, that is. Anyway, just waiting for the passengers to finish boarding here at the Guard de Strasbourg, and he says, he says as they immediately finish, and all right, I think we're pretty much, I think it's, we best be on our way. This will be a uh, non-stop run all the way to Karlsruhe. Which coaches have the working pantographs? Hold on a second. I haven't driven a TGV in a while, so I don't remember how well they perform. Ah, oh, it's the power cars in the middle that got the pantographs up. Right. Of course, it probably goes without saying that I know almost nothing about the railways in France, and yet here I am driving a French train. Go figure. Yes, I remember that this this French, this in German route was included only with the uh, I think it was just the deluxe, supposed deluxe edition of TS 2022, alongside the Cross City Line, uh, Frankfurt to Koblenz, and Washington DC's Baltimore. And as far as I know, I, I, I it's, yeah, as far as I know, it is still this route is still exclusive to. Uh, to the Deluxe TS 2022 package. Unfortunately, I've hardly seen any Steam Workshop scenarios made for this route, and I don't know where else to find scenarios that other people have made. Although this scenario that we're playing today is one that I found on Steam Workshop, and I'll put a link to it in the description. Ah uh, yes, the constant lag. Even though that's only meant to be happening when you're loading tiles. Well, scenery tiles, not every five seconds. One thing I remember when I was looking around this area on Google Maps was that the the majority of this section between Strasbourg and Karlsruhe is actually in Germany. So I think it's only like the two or three stations right at the western end, French. And then you go past the second French station, then cross the River Rhine, and then you're in Germany. I'm hope, almost hopeless with French pronunciation. Generally, the only ones I, the only French names I know, I even, know, I even vaguely know how to pronounce, are a few of the stations on the Lyon Metro, such as Croix Parquet. There goes the German Ice3M. That'll probably be going towards Paris. As for where this TGV has started, my guess is Paris as well. I remember last time I covered this route um, with the. Hold on a second, I'll just get, try to get a screenshot before I forget. Yeah, I remember that the uh, first time I tried driving a TGV on this route, uh, <laughs> despite it being before I started putting commentary on these videos, it went, well, by my standards, it went ballistic. Like, got over well over a thousand views within like two weeks, which normally just does not happen for this channel, despite the high subscriber count. 
Don't know the name of those sightings, of course. The state, the station we're coming up on, and I can obviously see its name, but I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. And on the right there, that grey electric engine, I believe that's the French BR186 that that is also included with this route. Although, come to think of it, that French electric engine, I'm pretty sure, is the only new motive power included with this route. Because everything else, I'm pretty sure, is just reused from previous add-ons, and certainly not the first time Dovetail have done that sort of thing. So I've noticed that, especially with some of the TSW routes, they do they sometimes reuse engines from previous add-ons, especially with the Deutsche Bahn BR143, which first appeared with Ruhrsieg Nord, but then Dovetail reused it with both of the Dresden routes. Speaking of which, I think the BR143 has been in train simulator for actually quite a long time now. And I don't drive the T the older TS version, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be anywhere near as good as what you see in TSW. Right, I think these signals that we're seeing at the moment, I'm pretty sure they're still French. Um, because I think the crossing of the River Rhine is a bit more obvious. Although it's not like it's not like what you see on the West Coast Main Line at Gretna Junction, where they do have the sign saying you've crossed the border between England and Scotland. Although there's the station that's coming up there on the heads up display. Which and I know that's a German station. Just go back to the main view and uh Hmm, I think this might be the crossing of the River Rhine. In which case, we get a screenshot of the train crossing the bridge. And I think you'll know whether or not I've done this, but I'm thinking for the thumbnail, I'll probably put that screenshot in there and then put in the German the French the German flag on one side and the French on the other. I probably will do that if I remember. And I think if that was the River Rhine, then yeah, we're now I think we're now in Germany. Oh, wait a minute. That signal. No, it's still French. Unless that. Okay, I'm confused. God, this lag is this lag is going to be deaf of me. Oh crap! This is 60k speed on it. Ah, this will be this is the proper crossing. So, the side that the camera's on is in, is in Germany, and the side that we're coming from is France. And one thing I've forgotten about the TGV is uh, the brakes are a bit overkill when they're actually working. It's a bit awkward trying to get them to or trying to apply them, and then in some ways it's, it will take them a while to release the brakes. Hello, there's a German electric engine. The that'll be the Deutsche Bahn BR146 stroke two with some Doppelstock Wagen coaches. I featured those in quite a few TSW videos. And I think um, yeah, the BR146 appears in that recent Dresden video I made. I probably won't remember to do so, but if I do, I'll if I do remember it, I'll put a link to that. Dresden video in the top right corner, so you can check it out if you haven't already done so. Oh wait a minute, just accidentally, I think I just accidentally, uh, accidentally shot the coupler. Because, I mean, I keep pressing, when I go to blast the horn, I keep pressing the spacebar and N key, which is the, which is what you use to work a two-tone horn in TSW, but obviously in the old, in this older train simulator, it's just, uh, it's just space bar and B. That doesn't work on American engines, of course, because if you press the B key, you get the bell sound. Right, now if memory serves, somewhere along this route, you do get to bring, you do get to drive the ICE or TGV trains at speeds of up to at least 160 kilometers an hour. So. I know that from my experience on the Marseille to Avignon 
routes that the TGV trains can easily get up to 300, and actually no, 320 kilometres an hour, which is, I think that's just over 5 kilometres a minute, which to me is, well, is incredibly fast, especially for a train. That's where I think there'll be some little crossings along this way. Something else I've just remembered about uh, Karlsruhe is that it's also, it's, this, its inclusion on this route to Strasbourg is not the first time that Dovetail have featured Karlsruhe in Train Simulator because originally, I think it was about 2015, they brought out the what they called the Rhine Railway which was the, a route add-on that featured Mannheim to Karlsruhe and since then that they extended that route north from Mannheim towards uh, to Frankfurt and technically they've extended it again to go to Strasbourg so theoretically you could so now so we've got the complete so now we've got the complete route from Frankfurt to Strasbourg in train simulator so in a way you could dr do a drive a service on on line U5 of the Frankfurt U-Bahn from like Bongersheim Bl to, to the Hauptbahnhof then nip on the Frankfurt to Koblenz route, get in a Stadler Flirt 3 or BR429, take that to Koblenz, wait no, no you take, you get in the Ice 3 or something else of that nature, then go nip down to Karlsruhe and then get in a, perhaps get in a TGV and nip across to, nip across to France. I think at least one of these German stations will hop out and see which name it is, but for now I'm going to try and stay in the cab. Especially since it seems to be pretty decent frame rates for the most part when you stay in this view, aside from when it either randomly lags or does the tile loading. It's funny how that uh, that bell, that little bell sound that you hear at those, these German level crossings and train simulator doesn't seem to be present in TSW. So coming up on the station. Or is that just me? No, it is another station. With the, that French electric engine earlier. Or wait, no, this is, either this is an old station building that's now a private residence, or there was never actually a station here to begin with. Way, um, that should make for a good scene for the thumbnail. Same sort of wagons that I see on a lot of other, a few other German routes and train simulator. Oh, there's, there's the actual station. Legels, Legels Hurst. Uh, I do apologize. Do apologize if I've said that wrong. I mean, even though since I've been playing on the Frankfurt U-Bahn route, I have gotten a little better at German pronunciation, but the same can't be said for French, unfortunately. The other thing I remember about these high-speed trains is that, really, like, even when you do about like past 120 k's, but once you really get up to speed, past 160. The distance, the distances, and like the distance to go to your next stop, absolutely, uh, it's, I guess it, it absolutely glides past, and before, in a lot of cases, before you even realise you're on the final approach to your next station, or in this case, our only station, because from what I've seen in the past, the intercity, uh, the intercity express and train or Grand Vitesse services that cover the section between Strasbourg and Karlsruhe don't have any intermediate stops. And yeah, come to think of it, I wouldn't mind, so even though I'm completely novice on this country's railways, I wouldn't mind seeing more French routes and train simulator. I mean, one route in particular that I wouldn't mind seeing, especially, would be either like a net, big network route that includes all four lines of the Lyon Metro, or the, I believe it's called LGV Sudest, the original TGV, yeah, the original TGV route from Paris to Lyon. 
that in, in particular uh, how it was perhaps in the early 80s when the TG when the original TGV oh, well they also called TGV Sudest but yeah when the original TGV units were still in that really nice looking orange and black livery and here's something else that I just remembered for whatever reason quite a few years ago Lego brought out a set or a train set that was modelled, that was very clearly modelled on the original TGV Sudest units. But they call, A, they called it the Horizon Express, and B, it was completely devoid of any like SNCF or TGV branding. And for whatever reason, it was only a three car set. At least, yeah, it was only a three car set with, with the one power car and two articulated coaches and uh, speaking of which the Lego that Lego City passenger train from 2018 uh, which is one I've actually got myself I'm actually looking down on it down down on the, on the floor now and I can see this train and it's only got it's a cat outside I can see yeah it's this Lego City 60197 passenger train has only got one power car and two coaches and whilst I do generally like Lego especially after essentially getting back into it since Christmas I don't like how that one train looks incomplete especially since a lot of the previous Lego City passenger trains especially like the one from 2006 those ones did have a second cab at the other end so they did look complete, even if the cab at the other end was actually in a cab car and not another vehicle that was made to look like a power car. Oh, done a couple again. Right, this is the section where we can really get some speed up. We can, the speed limit's now gone up to 250 kilometers an hour, which is just above 4 k's a minute. Although, as I said earlier, this is not as fast as this is not the TGV's top speed by any means. Especially since quite a few years ago there was one specially modified unit that did a test run and somehow made it up to 574 kilometers an hour. And not counting maglevs or anything other than or anything other than conventional wheel trains. That particular TGV was or st I think still is the world's fastest train on conventional, on conventional steel wheels. I actually can't think of it. I seem to recall that the TGV power cars at the very least were the basis for, uh, for a character on Chuggington. Although the less I say about that awful show, the better. I see that on now we've got these uh, some of these barriers on either side of the track. And I'm pretty sure this, that's for noise insulation. Quite often there's these high speed lines, or lines that are approached for trains to go a little bit faster. They pass through residentially, residentially built up areas, and obviously they wouldn't want to be bothered by all the noise. So that would explain, that explains why they've got these barriers up. And if you look there, of course, there's all these houses. I've just remembered that another high-speed route I've got in the collection, except it's a Chinese one. And I believe it's called Chengdu to Swinling High Speed. And the train that comes with that route, the CRH-1A, is restricted to 250. And I haven't driven on that route in absolutely ages, because generally I've had no reason to. Well, it's not that I haven't had any reason to, it's just that I haven't had, really had the motivation. I dare say that on the other side of that barrier there, there'll be, oh yeah, I can tell just from looking at these extra signals that there's another double track line. And I would assume that that's where like local traffic, would, or local and freight traffic would run. Okay, those girders just randomly popped in. Hello. I don't mind the way this girder work looks here. There's a station. That's what looks like a BR423 on that billboard. Let's see if I can find a station name board. 
This is, seems to be one of the few well detailed station models I've seen from DTG. I mean I've certainly upped the game with uh, TSW but for the most part the built models and train simulator are a bit bland. Ach hern. Hmm. That's what you say when you clear your throat. Nice. Oh, it's gone by reasonably quickly. This run has gone by reasonably quickly. Only about 20 minutes out from Carl's River. Although that's 20 minutes in game time, because with this constant lag, it'll probably be more than a little bit more than 20 minutes in real time. Despite the fact that this has also got a high speed section, this Strasbourg to Karlsruhe route is certainly a very different beast from Marseille to Avignon. Because for the most part that route has got like a proper dedicated high speed line, high speed section, where it was like about nine kilometers out of Marseille Saint Charles, where the TGV trains branch off from the conventional lines and they go into a very long tunnel which serves as the start of the high-speed section. And then they stay on that high-speed high track all the way to Avignon. Although, come to think of it, and yeah, I've just remembered that in more recent times, Dovetail did release an extended version of that route, which now goes all the way to Lyon, but I have, still haven't got that extended version. Simply because, even though I would like to see more French routes in the game, I'm honestly not that much of a fan of French trains, aside from the TGV series. And actually, uh, the only other... the only French railway system that I really know anything about, history-wise, is the Lyon Metro. And I didn't even know it existed until I watched, I think, one of David Frankel's videos about a year or so ago. And there's another BL-146. And the main thing I remember from researching the Lyon Metro is that there's the four lines in the network, A, B, C, and D, but out of those four, well, but then they're not all the same. Like, in, e in other words, each line is distinctly different from the other, from the other three. And so line D on the, on the Lyon Metro is, actually has driverless trains. I believe are called the MPL 85, and that's the only that's, those are the only driverless trains on that system. But lines A, B, and D have, or well, the trains on those lines have rubber tyres, which appear, from what I've seen, appear to be assisted by conventional rails and wheels. So why they've got rubber tyres as well is beyond me. Especially when you have line C, which is the strangest line on the network by far. Because not only is it the only Leon Metro line that has conventional steel wheels instead of rubber tyres, it's also A, the shortest, and B, uh, the only one that uses overhead wires to power the trains instead of the third rail. And the other notable aspect about line C is that is that it was partially built on or the current route between Hotel de Ville and Louis Bardel and Cure, 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 uh, no, C U I R E. Uh, the other notable thing about that route is that it was partially built on the formation of an old funicular, the funicular which once ran between Qua Parquet and Qua Russe. And from what I've seen in historical photographs, the area around where the current Kwapake station is today, uh, it really has changed an awful lot since the days of that old funicular. And as, and I think, the, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the old Kwapake station was closed and a new one was built for the metro. And this is the 101. The other notable, another notable thing about Line C is that the, this section that reuses the format part of the old funicular formation is actually on a 17% gradient. 17%, which means it's a little bit steeper than 1 in 10. And even then, 1 in 10 is already insanely steep for a railway. 
it might, and as such, it might not surprise anyone to know that the trains on Line C, which are called, uh, they're called MCL80, I believe, because it's MCL75 on Lines A and B, and yet MCL80 on Line C, and MPL85 on Line D. But no, the M the MCL80 trains, they do you they do have to use a rack and pinion system. And go on go on um, go on YouTube or Google Images and look up the on Metro Line C. And chances are you'll find pictures of the station that's on this brutal, well this absolutely insane 17% grade. And that's quite parquet. Apparently it's the steepest metro station in Europe. And one thing's for sure is that someday in the future, ideally before 2030, I will go to France and more specifically just Paris, Lyon and Marseille. And I'll certainly go and have a look at the, uh, at the, at the Lyon Metro and have a look at Line C for myself. Well, not just Line C, but all four lines. Speaking of lines, I see that these slow lines that we've been running parallel along we've been run alongside for a while have ended and are now on a double back to double track. This, uh, this obviously means that we're not too far from Carl's Ruha. I do apologize if you can hear the buzzing of cicadas as well as me blabbering away. Unfortunately, around this time of year in New Zealand, we do get a lot of these annoying cicadas that keep making this screeching noise all day. And it does your head in sometimes. Although actually, for the mo most, most of the time for me, I realise I don't even notice. Over crossing and reduction of the speed limits again. Actually, I wonder if this train has got anything like LZB. Doesn't look like it. Although considering that this is a train that's running in Germany, that's able to run in Germany, I've been looking for things like the PZB and or PZB release levers or, thing, or something else like that, like a CFA pedal or something. Down there, uh, just below the throttle there, that does kind of look like a CFA pedal. Oh, there's the thing for LZB. Oh, PZB, what? Wait, so if that's... Uh, it's very confusing. Let's try to stay as close to the speed limit as we can. Don't really want to risk being late. Although it's not likely, considering how... Considering that there's these extra speed limits we're about to get before too long. So if you're going like 120 kilometers an hour, and you're covering a distance of 20 kilometers. That means you'll cover that section in about 10 minutes, as long as there weren't any other speed reductions. Right, this is where the station is. This is, once again, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that, but I like, I like the look of this old building. It reminds me of a few of the stations I've seen around the uh, Nachvoker, or on the Nachvoker Dresden route in TSW. Yeah, these, uh, yeah, these stations, the state, from what I've seen so far, the stations on this route are much better, or much more well modelled than what I've seen in previous Dovetail Games routes. Speaking of which, it's not often, well these days, it's really not that often when you see Dovetail Games actually making a route for a train simulator themselves. Uh, I'm guessing it's because they would have focused all, or tried to focus most, if not all, of their efforts on uh, TSW. Although, last I heard, there was still, or trains, the older train simulators still had more players than TSW. Which, yeah, I don't really know what to, how, what to think about that. But I guess, at the end of the day, it's just, it's just, um, people, the, the, the players having freedom of choice. Station. 
last I heard, uh, Karlsruhe does technically have an S-Bahn system, but it's not in the not in the traditional sense. Where, as far as I know, they actually use like sort of tram train units, kind of like what you see on the Sheffield to Rotherham service in England, where they use the Clark, where the Sheffield Super Tram uses the Clark, the Stadler build class 399s. I know that Karlsruhe does have a tram system, but yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is with like commuter rail, the commuter rail in that city, especially when there are a lot of German cities that do have S-Bahn networks. So I just hit a car horn, not a train simulator, by the way. Is that beep? No, they just hit a beep, and the beep, beep noise on this train. Imagine how complicated it would be to try and drive one of these things on an international service in real life when you have to deal with the different safety systems in France and Germany. And, has it, and, and it's also, perhaps it might also be worth mentioning that I am not, an, I, uh, not really an expert in either system. I mean, I don't really know how either of them work, come to think of it. And more often than, yeah, generally whenever I drive a German or French train, especially in TSW, they always have these really these really complicated safety systems like PZB and CFER, LZB, off. Because I've never really been able to get my head around how they work. Although, I, there is AFB, which is like a cruise control or speed selector that some engines and units have, which I, mean, I do understand how that works. But almost nothing else. Hello, there's a push pull consist with Doppelstock Wagen coaches and and a BR one four six. Just try to get another screenshot of the TGV with the German engine. Let's see what the station is. This is Domersheim. What is that? What is that destination? Offenburg. Okay, I don't know where Offenburg. I don't know where Offenburg is. That's a point. I don't know if it's included on this road or if it's just a what is the station. Ah, oh, that is Offenburg. So it is there. Hello. Why is this Domersheim Nord? By the way, Nord is Nord is German for North. That's one of the few German words I know. Um, but yeah, I was surprised to see those two stations so close together. Don't see that. Don't see that too often, especially not on a standard gauge main line. This is the sort of thing that I would like. Stations that close together is the sort of thing I would normally expect to see. Um, on like a metro system, especially as I've mentioned so many times in this video, the Frankfurt U-Bahn or U-Bahn, is a bit of a say it in German. Actually, that reminds me that playing through on that route and listening to the announcements was actually how I learned how to count from one to nine in German. And that's that's eins, zwei, drei. Uh, yeah, eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, und neun. Okay, I'm Because when you say nine uh, in German, that means no. I believe in German, nine is spelt, I think, N-E-I-N. And obviously in English, as the word version of the number nine, it's N-I-N-E. And it's used for the crossing. Oh, it's just about hearing dog barking. Yes, she, despite being a very small dog, our Bessie is sometimes a right pain. Especially when she starts barking. Right, well considering we're now less than 10 kilometers from Karlsruhe Holt Bahnhof, I dare say at some point there will be a re major reduction in the speed limit. And once I've finished with this run, I'll probably uh, probably load up another scenario and drive go and go for a drive on the Pennsylvania Railroad GG1. And then at some point soon I might, I don't know, revisit the old Mannheim to Karlsruhe routes and then kind of continue off this run with the TGV and then go to Mannheim with like the BR425 or something 
and then from there continue on to front foot and then perhaps revisit the front foot U-bahn. Actually, I suppose I don't need to go through the hassle of a Mannheim to front foot run in order to revisit front foot, or well, the U-bahn, I mean. speed limit. And by the way, if you if you try doing if you're if you're stupid enough to do these sorts of speeds, like 145 k's an hour, on the roads in, here in New Zealand, and the cop sees you, you will get ticket. I'm pretty sure you would get ticketed. And because generally, the, hello, there's an ice too. That's obviously an older ice train. I wasn't expecting to see that. But now, as I was saying, here in New Zealand, the speed limit on our roads is normally 100 kilometers an hour. But there's, I think, like two sections of new and fancy expressway where you can go up to 110. But, uh, Unfortunately, sometimes I do see some idiots speeding, but that's that. It's their funeral, I guess. Although, although obviously you never, even if they are doing stupid things on the road, you never want them to end up in an accident. That's a V key works the windscreen wipers. I suppose that's fairly normal with these things. There's another Ice3M and another TGV duplex and some... Okay, I did not realise the speed limit was going down to 60. Yes, yeah, so um, I always... I just remembered how easy it is to trip the emergency brakes on this train. Generally, the generally speed limits coming into and going out of these major stations in Germany, they're usually going at like only like 60 or 40 k's an hour. Yeah, I think I think like for Dresden, coming in and out of there, it's like 40, the speed limits like 40 k's. But at least once you've managed to sort get the brakes in the right position without tripping the emergency brakes, this TGV does slow down pretty quickly. Right now, I can't remember which end of the station uh, is the one we head out towards Mannheim. I suppose I'll have a look once we've brought this lot to a stop. And I highly doubt that this platform is actually going to be able to fit all 20 coaches. Because it is ra rather a long train. And in the UK at least, the passenger services, or the concerts for passenger trains, are generally no longer than 12 coaches. So yeah, for me, to see a 20 car train is very unusual. What is that guy saying? If any German speakers are watching, please let me know what he's saying, because I have no clue. Wait, don't need dynamics, I suppose. Okay, and we've done it. Yeah, welcome to Karlsruhe. Or, as I believe they would say in German, Willkommen im Karlsruhe. Although, obviously, I've probably got that wrong. Anyway, yeah, this is, um, this is, yeah, hold on, I'll just look at which end of you go to get to Mannheim. Ah, so we have come in, I think, the opposite direction. Because if you go out this way, out east from Karlsruhe, uh, that's when you are on course for Mannheim. But, uh, what, but, uh, well, I suppose I'm um, not really sure what else to say now, but uh, since we're at the end. But, um, yeah, now, well, yeah, now that we're in Karlsruhe, which is 82 kilometres from Strasbourg, I think I'll sign off by saying thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this run with the TGV duplex, even though the frame rates were pants. Until next time... Wait, <laughs> Yeah, I've screwed that up. But no, yeah, suffice to say, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.